bags are packed, are you ready to go? This time tomorrow we'll be on the road Riding with you in the sunnier days I wouldn't want it any other way Welcome to Children of Erte. Thank you for coming back again. And as usual, I will kick it over to Adam to tell us all about today's sponsors. Incredible sponsors. First, Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. Awesome video game where you can collect different heroes. <laughs> I am seeing things with familiars start to pop up. Uh, I, again, everyone on this show has some characters in that game and and uh, we really like the game so go check that out you can get an electrum chest if you uh you go over there uh to the overlay or somewhere in chat it is floating around so thank you for stopping by if you're coming from idle champions of the forgotten realms uh, we also have die hard dice you can get 10 percent off your order with the code Airte. And uh, we're also going to give away, I think, a couple of $25 gift cards in the chat here this evening. So uh, pay attention to what's going on there and get a chance to win those. And they have supplied the entire cast with difficulty class digits that we are yeah. rolling. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry, everyone. Um, we're, uh, I just want to see how those. long you can keep this up. I, I love know. It. <laughs> We'll, we'll see scraping <laughs> scraping scraping all right and so finally you will hear the dulcet tones of sirenscape here tonight because epic games need epic sound i am adam bradford the cdo of demiplane we have uh, several things going on uh at, at demiplane so check it out at demiplane.com we have these nexus digital tool sets they're coming up for some <laughs> of the best games in the world out there uh check that out and uh you can catch me on twitter at bad eye adam oh and i am playing silas jordan <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Hey, everybody. I'm Elise Timmery, and I'm a custom artist, stylist, and RPG performer. I'm working on some very cool things in the creative space that, of course, I can't talk about yet. But you can follow me on all socials at Elise Timmery Body. And tonight, as always, I am playing the overly serious, awkward <laughs> Harvard Law grad who has no idea that she's in the process of actually making friends. Bruce Armstrong. <laughs> Hi, I am Jen Kretschmer. You can find me on Twitter as at DreamWisp. You can find me streaming on Twitch as DreamWisp Jen. Uh, I am an author, performer. Uh, I do a bunch of stuff. I'm the creator of the Accessibility in Gaming Resource Guide, and you can find that in my pinned tweet. Um, and I will be playing your friendly neighborhood troublemaker, Maeve Morgan Flynn. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lauren Urban. I'm the content coordinator over at Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. And I, you know, play oboe every now and then. You can find me on Twitter as Oboe Lauren. You can find me here tonight playing Neb, who now basically wants to talk to everything. The shoe, the wall. She's going to try to talk to everything. <laughs> who knows? And hi, I'm Hope Lavelle. You can follow me on Twitter at the Hope Lavelle. I am a motion capture performer by day, and by night, I like to play some D and D. And tonight, I will be playing Miss Robin Beckett, who is there for you when you need a warm hug. Oh. And I am Deborah Ann Wool. I am your storyteller tonight. Um, so thank you to all of you for being here to play with me. Thank you to everyone at home for tuning in. So make yourselves comfortable, comfortable, and we will settle in for the seventh chapter of Children <gasps> of Erte. We're moving right along. You guys. Yeah. Lucky number seven. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky number seven. That's right. Let's hope. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So last time um, you woke up on the train to find that pretty much all the other people who were in this other sort of, you know, world from you, a different plane almost of existence, um, have sort of abandoned 
train, <laughs> abandoned ship, abandoned train. Um, they had sort of very much avoided the old sleeper car. You guys went and equipped yourselves because you had the idea that you needed to go to the Twin Creeks mine to find this lost piece of, of glass, this shard of glass, um, to sort of help either release whatever spirit is being held in room A and potentially release yourselves from this predicament. You went around the avalanche, had a very interesting encounter with some, some wolves, defended yourself uh, admirably, and perhaps made a new connection, <laughs> Neb. Um, and uh, you then uh, made it to the outside of uh, the Twin Creeks mine. So we'll pick up around there. Um, it was a long walk once you got around that uh, sort of avalanche that was blocking the tracks. Uh, it took you at least an hour, hour and a half as you sort of drag, dragged your sled along the train tracks. Um, as you went along, you could see that down off, you know, over to the left, it sloped downward into more forest and trees, um, then up onto the mountainside on the other side, just beautiful white snow. And as the tree line kind of disappears, it goes higher. Um, during your walk, the sun sort of slowly started to set so that just as you were arriving at Twin Creek's mine, you felt it was that perfect sort of magic hour, uh, dusk, if you may. Um, arriving there, you saw that there were a number of switch tracks. Um, there were some hand cars, otherwise known as, as pump trolleys, which have these sort of, it's like a seesaw that'll sort of pump them and move them down the track for you. Um, you saw then the opening to the mine. It was very small, sort of unassuming, lintel and post, um, low, about four feet off the ground, icicles hanging down. It's brutally cold now that the sun is going down. You've really felt the drop in temperature, so you're glad for your winter wear and your, your new pants, Silas, uh, <laughs> courtesy of Robin. Um, so yeah, as these icicles drip down almost from the ceiling to the floor, almost like bars sort of barring the way into the mine. As you look around, you also see many other um, uh, sort of features of this area. There is a frozen water tower. There is a, a, a stack of something, probably wood covered over with a tarp. Um, you can see more tracks and a chute that heads down the slope. As you sort of peer down the slope, you know, off to your to your left side, you can see two creeks, indeed, two rivers that sort of flow down by the bottom of this rise. Um, on this other side, um, there's mostly kind of um, just abandoned wheelbarrows and crates and barrels, things like that. Um, you do see sort of a track, a path that heads off around to the other side of this kind of jut of mountain. But that's what's in this particular area. So we just finished basically. Well, you just Bruce pulled just up. just finished. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pushing up um, the sled of all their yes. gear and uh, Oh, did you finish? I'm sorry. Did I just start? No, yeah, no, you're good. No, exactly. <laughs> okay. You're, you're right on time. Okay. Perfect so Faruza basically is, is, am I in, is she in front of all of you with the, with the sled of stuff? It could or... be. I mean, you, you guys can choose. I mean, you've been walking for a long time here. Oh, so, you know, you, how, you may have shuffled up who was pulling, how it was working. But when you arrived, sure, Faruza, you can be uh, <laughs> pulling the sled as you pull up, as you arrive at the, uh, the mine entrance. Well, and Silas, just to be really clear, Silas kind of throughout uh, approached Faruza, mm -hmm. uh, you know, mm -hmm. periodically and was like, hey, you know, I, I can I can take a shit, you know, and he kind of acted like he was wanting to help pull it. But then he would always kind of talk so long that the the thread <laughs> would be lost and then Faruza would keep pulling the sled. <laughs> yeah, Faruza sort of, I mean, she, she was feeling a certain kind of way because she didn't feel like she contributed to the okay. world fight as much so she's like this is something i want to do and she wanted to see if she can do it so she pushed and pulled yeah. and used mave's advice at sort of moving the sled upward and we got it to where it needs to be but when she got to the top she was sort of like out of breath still and she stopped and she looks around and she says, does anybody did anyone bring any water or anything like that anywhere in, it, in here maybe i take a, a water bottle out of my pack I mean, we got a lot of water in the snow as long as it's not the yellow <laughs> kind. Oh gosh, I'm not gonna drink that though. Didn't we get a a bunch of camping gear? And, you did. Like, did we pack, we pack, okay. You did. Yeah. You did pack some memories. You brought some cliff bars, although I think you fed 
most of the cliff bars to the wolves. Um, <laughs> you no have regrets. no regrets there. You have five harnesses with rope. You have three crampons, two single person tents, three pairs of snowshoes and pitons and the sled. You know, pitons right and pitons. Now. You've got climbing gear. And what time it's about? Five well, times. once so you, you, you once you got around that avalanche and, and Feruza heroically pushed it to the top, you walked for about an hour and a half uh, down the tracks, and now it's you know you're coming up on 5 p.m., 6 p.m. where the sun is setting in this very northern region, um, and yes, yeah, so it's just just getting that chill as you can hear the wind has picked up a bit as well um, as you are outside of the mine entrance. Well, I'm really grateful for the sun going down because it's been incredibly bright. Normally I have a hat that like kind of keeps the sun out of my eyes, but the snow has been so reflective. Um, but I'm really glad that the sun is going down, but that does mean it's going to get pretty cold, I imagine. So we probably need to make some kind of plan. Are we going in there or are we going to stay out here? I think it might be wise to not go in. Is it windy? It is. It's, it's definitely, there's a little chill. Now, you know, you have your gear, but this isn't, you know, professional winter camping. Right now you've got your own winter clothes and your own winter boots. I love between Robin and Silas, Silas in his reflective pants and Robin with her bright yellow boots. <laughs> I feel like I should give you a disadvantage on stealth. <laughs> well, we have two options. We get into the entrance of the mine to shield ourselves from the wind, or we stay out here and build a fire, because we're not going to build a fire inside of the mine. We would destroy ourselves with the smoke. What? Oh, that's true. We, we can't do a half and half and, like, build the fire just outside? Is that a thing? I don't know anything about camping, so I'm, if I'm asking questions... <laughs> I'm happy to learn. I mean, I'm kind of excited, but I have no idea how. Why, Neb? It. That is a that is a doable idea. If anyone else's game, I see some wood being covered over there. Maybe it's worth it to try that out. Well, I think that's what we have to do because otherwise, we're going to have to all get a pair of Silas's hammer pants. <laughs> I mean, Miss Robin did kind of an amazing job. <laughs> I wouldn't say no to that, but I don't know how much more material we have. Uh, those oh. are those are one of a kind pants. <laughs> also, I, I, I love them. <laughs> I really and do they are them. quite metallic on you. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, also, we only have two tents, right? Only two tents, Three. and they are okay. they are for single uh, sleepers. So, who's ever outside those tents is going to need a fire. Well, we probably need someone to make sure that we're not sleeping all at the same time because I don't know if you know this or not, but there are wolves in these parts. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, and I'm almost out of cliff bars to give them. And you don't want whatever's in this mine to get you. What <laughs> then? Um, What's in the mine? <laughs> we don't know yet. That's yeah, the exciting we don't. part. <laughs> You said that like you, you had a, an inkling of what was in there. <sighs> well, you know, I was once a tour guide for these caves that were, well, they were commercial <laughs> caves, but you never know. You get this feeling when you're inside them that something could be lurking. What? What's a commercial cave? <laughs> oh, it's one of those caves that... Like owned by Nike or something. <laughs> yes, it's just true. Just do it. That's yes, right. You just... You just walk in with your family and it's good to go. It's not like when you spelunk and have to repel and crawl through things. So Okay, it's, so like it's Disneyland. fun for the family. <laughs> yes. Okay. No, this, well, look. this looks this does not look like Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> so... We are we need to set up camp before it gets too dark. That's always a mistake people make is they don't set up camp in time and they get stuck in the dark and they can't set mm -hmm. it up. So I think we should set up a shelter. We can use the sled, perhaps, as a windbreak. So you have a good, uh, you have a good sort of grasp on camping, Maeve, sort of for I mean, this. A, a bit. Oh. As I said, <laughs> I have family no. who is in, in the oh. military. We learned a bit. Okay. Did some some camping well, when I was well, younger. I'm These happy to listen. Go ahead. I'm happy to listen to anything you have to say. You know, I'll learn. Yeah. Robin? Well, 
yes, Maeve, if you have any ideas, or all ears. I, I have some suggestions myself, but I would love to hear what you have to say. No, I've please. only slept in the bed of a pickup truck. I uh, <laughs> definitely have never put a tent together. Um, I just want to paint the picture. I see the five of you sort of huddled around, starting like this, and just a little, a little clump as you sort of try to talk about your options. As it just gets slowly kind of grayer and darker, and the wind uh, starts whipping up. But you know, like penguins in those videos, it's just I, I start gathering no um, city girl a number right. of twigs yeah. and branches and things, and mm -hmm. start building a fire. Yeah, give me a uh, survival check. Um. Uh, 19. A 19. Fantastic. So yes, not only underneath that tarp is there definitely like chopped fire wood, um, but as you go back into the trees a little bit, you're able to snap off some branches that feel pretty dry. You know, nothing has melted. So they're, you know, they're dry branches. Um, and you're able to collect a good bit of tinder, kindling, and uh, official firewood. So you're going to start building a fire. Where would you like to build it? Um, I think uh, how close to the mouth of the mine? We don't want anything coming out of the mine. Oh, God, don't remind me. <laughs> Can I just sleep to try to sleep tonight? I'll take first watch. <laughs> well, I mean, there might be people in there, and we would be okay with that, right? Also, we're trying yeah. to find people. <laughs> also, if we camp out here, they could still come out from the mine at us. It just will take an extra five feet. It's Bye. just, do we want to block the mouth of the mine or not? I, I think off to the side. Okay, so just off to the side. Just so off we'll say... to the side where we can sort of use the, the, the sled as a windbreak. Uh -huh. But have the, the side of the mountain as also yeah. a windbreak. Cool, so between the side of the mountain and the sled, you create kind of a, a two points of a triangle to sort of mm -hmm. try to, you know, effectively find the block the wind um so yeah you're able to do that um you clear you know with a 19 we'll continue to give it to you you clear out some of the snow and you're able to kind of get to kind of dry earth and maybe grab some rocks make a little a little pit as you begin to put the fire together uh what kind of fire starter do you guys have we have the lighter still i lighter? have my lighter okay. and uh i either some anyone have a book or <laughs> they don't mind Whoa. I, will, I don't know if people have a notebook straight for Fahrenheit or... 451 here <laughs> Neb will oh run God. her Neb will well, run her bag and she'll pull yes. out a moleskin book yes. and say <gasps> so uh, I'm supposed oh, no. to be drawing animals and plants <laughs> that I see along the train route for my brother but I think he'd rather that I had a fire tonight and survive, so she'll oh, open it up and go to the back. Book? Well, not the whole book. I was gonna burn, I was gonna pull out a couple. It. I mean, do you need the whole book? I was just gonna give you some pages, right? I think only a couple pages will be enough to start this thing, right, Maeve? Agreed. Yeah, just a, a few to get it to get it going. With so yeah, just crumple them up and put them in around the twigs. Yeah, fantastic. I will rip out however many pages or inside the twigs you make it a little tent yeah, yeah you did a perfect twigs. tp you know set up for your your campfire um with all your little little kindling and tinder underneath it you light one piece of her her notebook paper and sort of place it underneath as it begins to catch and slowly but surely a good little fire gets started yes we did it <laughs> hey this is wonderful <laughs> You can immediately, as you begin to gather around it, feel that warmth and there's that little crackle, you know, of, of fire that happens and that smell that's sort of comforting. Um, it's good you get it just in time as well because now it's really starting to get a little darker. Neb, the first beginning of stars, just little hints begin to poke out through the sky. Uh, it's a clear, clear sky, no sign of rain or clouds or storm. Um, you can only imagine what it'll be like in a few hours. So as you huddle around each other, you can still uh, hear the wind outside the sled, but you are fairly well protected around this fire. Yes. When I, when the stars first start to come out, yeah. um, Maeve is whispering something under her breath. Mm. Is it something you, you would like yeah. anyone else to hear? Or if you like if you'd like to. Would you like but... to make a perception check, Neb? I'm, yeah, sure. Uh, just, just for funsies. Yeah, for funsies. Mm. Uh, mm, that's a 21. Ooh. Yeah, nice. pretty good. Um, you hear her saying, starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. I wish I may, I miss, wish I might have the wish I wish tonight. 
I'll look over at you and say, what do you wish for? Oh, you can't tell, can you? Otherwise it won't come true. Oh, I didn't know that's how that worked. Maybe that's why I haven't ever had a wish come true. It's like blowing out birthday candles. The wish has to be a secret. Can you tell us after it happens? Maybe. I mean, I honestly would have thought that was all hogwash until like yesterday. So <laughs> there may there may be something True. to that. Yeah. True. Yeah. Um, is there anything else we should do to make this securable for the night? I mean, I you know what? That, I mean, we probably should store our. I mean, food away from us. I mean, oh, we because of bears. Really oh, fair. <laughs> yeah, we had wolves. Well, so I don't know if we're gonna have bears. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. Um, well, we'll say even with your nineteen, Maeve. Yeah, in your experience, you have to like hang it from a tree. Like yes, it can get really. <laughs> it can get really, really, uh, really bad. Um, but yeah, you have you have all of this gear with you. Some of you potentially, you know, the, the ground is cold and wet. It's snow. And as much as you try to clear it away, it's hard, cold, frozen ground. Um, so some of you are probably sitting on the packs or, you know, in some way kind of mm -hmm. using them. But you do, you know, you have this climbing gear, you have the tents, um, you know, uh, and then you have your own things that you brought. If there's anything Wait, Robin to will, will take the tents and yes. roll them out flat so that we can sit on them because okay. they're not going to do us much good, you know, put together. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely waterproof. So as you lay them out, while it doesn't do much to warm you, it mm -hmm. definitely keeps your, you know, as you won't melt the snow into your own garments below. Okay. Um, do we have those things... emergency blankets though? You have also? a few of those, yes. Or did I yeah. use them all in my pants? <laughs> <laughs> it has enough yardage for you to have had a, a, Sarah, a set of pants without only <laughs> using one. Um, I definitely, Frusa definitely wants to sit. She's sitting pretty close to Silas because she's hoping to siphon some warmth, warmth off his pants. Okay. Maybe they're, maybe she's sitting like right next to him and she's, she's munching on like a, I just picture her munching on a beef jerky and like sort of chewing like. <laughs> you got any more of that? I'll, I'll offer. MRE. As you, you know, some of you who maybe are not as used to, um, hiking and things like that you're you know you don't have this ex haven't had this experience before but hiking through the cold and the snow makes you so hungry that even something like jerky or like a pouch of oatmeal instant oatmeal suddenly tastes like the most gourmet <laughs> wonderful thing it just fills you with warmth mm. and she's making faces as she's yeah. chewing so we're <laughs> like, well, okay i think it's apple cinnamon this this one's apple cinnamon she rips open a pap and she's just eating she keeps eating. <laughs> the ration it but yeah yeah i'm gonna um, sit down oh go ahead okay robin is uh you know, she found finds a place to sit and she opens mm -hmm. up her bag and she pulls out uh what looks like a scrapbook or a photo album and she opens it up and she kind of just begins to like look through it just kind of off on her own and she uh takes the picture she had taken of the door and she finds a little spot for it and she you know glues it in with her little glue stick that she brought <laughs> and uh and she just kind of reminisces over some things in this book lovely what you got there miss robin oh this well, I never go anywhere without this. It's my photo album. And I've been collecting photos my entire life. Actually, I'd say my entire life is in this book. And I like to reminisce over it from time to time and helps me remember my life as, you know, as I get older, my memory is not so good. But this, this helps. You know, um, speaking of memories, I don't know about all of you, but I've been thinking about everything that has happened in the last day. Has it really only been a day? <laughs> uh, day and a half. <laughs> I've, I've been wondering about a bunch of things. Uh, do you all feel up to talking for a little bit before going to sleep? I can't go to sleep until 2 a.m. No matter what happens. Be able to sleep. I'm actually with you. 
Sorry, Thanks to Robin, I definitely won't be able to sleep. <laughs> with, with that, Perusa, all all of you here off in the distance. So let's start with that. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. Ned well, can just talk to them. I, I mean, hopefully, but but actually, I wasn't going to ask specifically about talking to them, but the fact that they could see us and interact with us and the people on the train couldn't and i don't know what that means don't you find that odd it's weird because um i mean i didn't directly attempt to interact with the people on the train but it was it that they couldn't interact with us or they just didn't could you tell like it it seemed like they couldn't see us or hear us at all. I tried to speak to Augie, and it didn't seem like she could hear me. It didn't go well. But th those wolves had no problem. I don't know if that's significant, but I thought that was... I had been thinking before we left the train that maybe we're just somewhere where no one could see and hear us, but if the wolves can, maybe other people can i think miss robin and mave were just dead on we had fallen into some other place now i'm not exactly sure if it was you know fairy rings or uh you know science fiction portals teleportation or whatever but i i think it makes complete and total sense after our empirical evidence that we're in some kind of new place now i have something to tell you when when we were at the front of the train, I heard voices and checked out the engine room and there was a man laying on the ground and I could only catch glimpses, but I saw his spirit raise from his body and leave this world. I didn't want to say anything at the time, but I think it is important to think about as far as as far as where we are and, and when we are and what we are. And if I could see his spirit leave his body and transcend, well, maybe that's a hint as to where we are at the moment. So we're all just in purgatory, like a terrible <laughs> TV show. So you think maybe, maybe we didn't survive that crash? Is that a possible idea? You're floating? Casually? I don't think so. I think maybe towards what Silas said, an in-between world where we can see both this world and the next or something. A and interact, because we could still pick up stuff on the train and, and that was going to be the other thing that I was kind of wondering about. We've got to get these pieces of the mirror and bring them back to the, the woman in the train that I'm still not going to mention her name because I just expect bad things to happen. Mm. And the other people who were on the train, they headed back towards the station, we think, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the story that we were told about the people all those years ago who disappeared off the train, they were from people who had found the empty train and then recovered it. Do we think the people at the station are gonna send people to recover this train? I would like to think so, yes. If we're not there when it happens, is that a problem? If we're in another world, they won't be able to recover us anyway. But we need to get to the room with the mirror to put all the shards there, right? Well, look, there was a book on engineering and, and in the, the bedroom, and there was a, a, a manual about train mechanisms and, and how, to, how to drive one, how to make the engine work. In, in the main room, perhaps we can get the train working again. I mean, it's one thing to watch a YouTube video and figure out how to fix your washing machine. It's probably another thing to read, especially read a book. How long is that going to take? And figure out how to well, drive a train? 
Well, well, are you really driving it, or are you just kind of stepping on the, the gas? It's not a, and then yeah, it's so on a track, right? So Maeve, no, give know. me a quick um, history check. You have those books on you, yes? Yes, I do. Uh, <laughs> 21. 21. Um, so without looking up anything specific, you're just sort of, you know, remembering and glancing and, and thinking about what you, the little bit maybe that you know just about engineering from your experiences. Um, one thing that troubles you is that you know that trains can go backwards. Hmm. Hmm. So Maybe it, it, it is troubling <laughs> that they didn't go backwards. <laughs> 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 to you, Maeve. You can share that or not. That is information that has occurred to you. Hmm. I think I will share that. Okay. Uh, so on page, you know, forty-seven <laughs> here of five hundred and twenty-three, uh, it it does say. Uh, I just checked the index for backwards. Uh, <laughs> this is why you should always have an index. Um, and the index is twenty pages long. <laughs> an index. Luckily, B is on the fifth yes. page of the index. <laughs> <laughs> um, that and, uh, and I'll also offer with that role as well um, that yes, trains are very hard <laughs> to drive. That you know that you know you really need to be an engineer who has trained in all of that because they are dangerous. You know, and so yeah, there's a lot going on in that that you you learned backwards and and tricky and dangerous. Okay, uh, I think I know why they left without the train. Why? Minus the fact they probably think it's haunted and that they <laughs> lost all of their passengers, but also the... We saw two graves, right? You saw one grave. Two... Oh. I think the one grave belonged to the one who could run the train. So they had time to bury him and sort of mark... Of course. Would you not make the time as well? This is true. <sighs> but I mean, then I... Like seriously like a single bus scenario but it's like a single train scenario like why would you only bring one engineer I mean, there's got to be some backup driver right well, well, i true. mean when you're when you only have five passengers it sounds like a tight budget yeah so let's let's think for a second who have we seen since we crashed is there a possibility there's someone still on board well we checked the so if you if you saw well, no, we didn't. There were two two cars behind us. We didn't check. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we Frizza and I were not able to. We didn't go into those cars because I thought we had done like a a, a the dual perception check that right. we got uh, twenty. <laughs> so you you walked walked along the accessible cars. So that was the luggage car, the um, sort of lounge and crew quarters, and the sleeper car. You, however, and and you went around the tender and sort of peered into the engine. So you did not go in the engine, you did not explore the tender, and you did not go into the caboose. Okay. Um, thinking back to that little excursion, how sure would we be if there was anybody in any of those cars? Let's just do, we'll do like a retroactive perception. So as you sort of try to remember what it was, give me a perception check. Okay. From both of us, or just yeah, sure, us? each of okay. you, yeah. Okay. Let's see. Anything? Ooh, nineteen. Nineteen from Perusa. I, I also got a nineteen. A nineteen. Nice. I think did you two are twins. <laughs> Didn't we get the same exact role the first time we did? You did. You two were so in sync on that this walk. I mean, this is like you just held hands and sang <laughs> songs and did some jump rope. Yeah, did some skipping rope. <laughs> Train crash, yay! <laughs> Dead supernatural, yay! Um, <laughs> thinking back on it, um, everything, you know, everything was dark. You didn't see movement anywhere. Um, you, you potentially will even say, you know, the caboose, maybe you, those doors were not, were locked and they were like, frozen solid like they didn't look like anyone had accessed them you maybe knocked on them you couldn't find your way in um and you know the tender and the engine were sort of 
scary machines so you didn't go too close to those you didn't want to <laughs> set anything off we'll say but you did not get the sense that there was a living presence you know in that in those areas yeah Feroza, i don't know what you remember if you want to just uh if you want to tell me if you think of anything else but i get the sense everybody left we we circled those cars we couldn't get into. We looked around all the rest of the stuff we could. Mm -hmm. And we were asleep for a while, at, but that was still not a long time. They had ransacked the kitchen and buried that poor person and, that, yeah. and then left. And I don't know if anyone would still be hiding out there or doing anything and we wouldn't have noticed them. Yeah. Um... Ned is telling the truth. Like what was left was just cold, closed, locked, and dark. We just didn't. I didn't sense anything. So somebody could have been in there. They were. They're just definitely dead at this point. Silas, I mean, you're probably <laughs> right, but it's like the reminder. I'm still sort of, sort of coming to terms with all of but this. Why? Why would we be the only ones to phase? But then Augie was just running around like a wild woman. And, well, it right. has to do with room A, of course. The magic that came from that room, uh, or whatever, the spiritualness, it, 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 it was real. I, I think you're right, Robin, and I would go a step further, because I'm wondering, there were only the five of us that were brought onto this trip. Were we brought on purpose? Huh. You mean like that movie Clue? <laughs> Oh, I love that old movie. I've watched it so many times. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to find all the endings on YouTube. <laughs> uh, so many things you just said make me feel super old. <laughs> <laughs> what a classic! Yeah. <laughs> YouTube, Miss Robin, is a photo album for the internet. I I know what YouTube. Oh, okay, is. okay. Yes, she probably works there. In the early days, <laughs> she might have invented it. Yeah. It wouldn't I surprise mean, if, me if you said so. I believe it. Yeah. So I, I can't help but wonder how much of this is intentional. Yeah. I mean, I don't necessarily want to think it was nefarious, but it—it it seems. I don't know. It's just very interesting and. Uh, how did all of you get your tickets onto this train? Destiny is old. That's what I'm feeling right now. Did Destiny give you the train ticket? Oh, no, because... no, no, no. That was my, uh, that was my grandfather, my pops. Um, he left it. He died recently. Um, I don't know, maybe a month or two ago. And I was, oh. he was a big collector. He had a huge collection. I was going through that collection uh, because I was going to get it shipped to my store. And uh, when I was doing it, I saw this uh, envelope that uh, was addressed to me. So I don't know who he thought was going to send it, but it was there. And so I saved it the mail trip and I opened it up and it had a ticket to this train ride. So then I looked it up online a little bit, found out a few things about it. And, um, and mainly I thought that... Uh, that my pops would get a kick out of me actually going. And I didn't know why, I didn't know why the date was when it was in the future. I don't, I don't know when he intended to give it to me, but, um, but yeah, I thought the timing, you know, now that we're like in a magical world, I think the timing might've been a little, you know, not coincidental, but, uh, but yeah, other than that, I uh, just thought that it would be a way to honor him. I think I have the exact same feeling. My ticket came from my late Harold. But he had died 12 years ago, and I... Of course, that's when he gave me the ticket, but I, I lost it. And uh, when I found it recently, the date was for when we arrived. And I thought that was very peculiar, but I didn't think too much into it, because well, Harold was always up to something. 
So maybe he planned it that far in advance, knowing that he wouldn't be here for when the trip was, and he wanted me to take it. I'm not sure. That, that's really sweet. And I have a very similar story. My great-grandfather left me this ticket. He passed away many, many years ago. Uh, he had it delivered a week before the ride. I wasn't going to go, but my mom convinced me to to do it, to honor Zadie. But, but the person who gave me the ticket was my great-grandfather, and he's also been passed for a while. I so don't all understand. these dead people are giving us tickets, so we are definitely in purgatory. <laughs> well, well, we haven't heard the stories from Feruza or Maeve. Yeah, yeah. do you mind ahead. sharing? Uh... One thing I'm kind of noticing, a uh, common thread here, sort of alluding to what Silas just brought up, which makes me feel extra comfortable tonight in the cold, sitting in front of a dark, empty mind. Thank you very much. Um, I, was, I, was, I was adopted when I was a, a child and uh, by a very loving and amazing family. I was very lucky to make it out of the system. Uh, the woman who was in charge of my adoption um, was named Miss Priscilla Beckett. And she sort of looks over at Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> Hence your uh, sort of last name, why I was asking you about that. It's just an interesting last name, I guess. But um, after I was adopted, I sort of lost touch with her. And while I was in foster care, she was like my lifeline just in general. So when I left, I think I just sort of took off and kind of forgot about her. But years later, I had wanted to reach out to her and I was told that she had retired and gone off somewhere. So I just, you know, said, well, it's my fault. I probably should have kept up with her better. The one day I was leaving the law firm where I work in Manhattan, came home, gathered my mail, fed my bird, and there was this weird looking envelope in my stack of mail that I'd brought in the house. And uh, the, the ticket was from her, and it was dated the day that I was adopted. So it didn't, I just assumed it was a post office mistake, though. I mean, highly improbable, right? I mean... Im improbable if it was just you, but now we've got four people who have tickets in improbable ways. Wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You have a bird? <laughs> I was going to ask you about I have that. a bird, not had, I have a bird. <laughs> well, I, I want to ask about your bird, but I feel like we've left Maeve out. Maeve. Mine was fairly normal. <laughs> my friend who it's from isn't dead. And it came to my work. It's not that unusual. So this friend, though, is this friend like the devil, the chief of purgatory? Or... Yes, my best friend is the devil, the chief well, of no, purgatory. Like, I mean, they can like be uh, many, many different things and appear in many different guises, right? Silas, I don't think the people... I mean, first off, I don't believe in hell or purgatory, but I think in the, the in the systems that do, I don't think it's the devil that runs that. I think purgatory is supposed to be a good place you go to I don't fix know. things before I've you go to heaven, right? I've seen a lot of right? shows. It's sort of like the shower space. You're getting the, the sin <laughs> off of you, and then you go, right? <laughs> that's that's what the, the, the different religions that I know about say, but uh, do they also include getting magical powers and having to help somebody escape a train? I mean, I'm just using purgatory in the, uh, you know, placeholder sense. Like, we're, we're in some kind of, like, holding bucket uh, of some sort is what I mean Look, by that. I'm sure he would think it is hilarious to send me to purgatory, but... Your friend? Yes. <laughs> And it's possible that this is just a cruel joke that he's playing. Um, he has Heath in it. He has, I'm sorry? The name Heath 
has heat in it, like His fire. His name is not heat. Like, or what did His you name just is say? Will. Will, what did you just say then? Heed probably. <laughs> Heed probably. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We, your your accent throws me a little bit sometimes. It's also extraordinarily cold. So not only is it like getting harder to talk, but there's like I have a the, big face. Like yeah, it's like that after cold my face. in the back of your ears. Uh. It is now full dark. Uh, the only light that remains to look at your photo album or, you know, to have these conversations as you see the firelight flicker across each other's faces is that fire. Uh, Neb, the sky is filled again with more stars than you've ever seen in your life. I want to go take a look and get away from the fire to take a look, but then that's going to be a bad thing. But <laughs> but yeah, I think at that point, like Neb is still listening, but yeah. she's she's listening like this. Great. So ahead, all of our tickets came from someone very special to us. And mostly yeah, did. sounds like it. But they're hot, like Neb said. I mean, I, I understand that like we all have these ideas, big, huge ideas, and there has to be an explanation because I do like to think that I, Feruza Armstrong, live in the real world. However, there has to be some sort of connection between us there has to be this is too quick does there maybe well, we're just five strangers in the night it silas and i both dark. lived in atlanta oh you lived in atlanta briefly and nice. i told you i went to i went to school there oh yeah 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 emory emory right yes okay robin and, and i knew each other when she came to work at the bakery for a little bit Many people live in New York, too, right? We all live in New other York. Than that, for, yeah, sorry, other than that, I have no connection to any of you, I don't think, other than the nope, New York City. absolutely not. <laughs> I mean, besides the living in New York thing, but New York's You don't know Priscilla a... Beckett, do you, Miss Robin? What's that? Priscilla Beckett? Not related to you? Can't say that I know. I, asked. I never had children. The one thing I've never done. Maeve takes out her phone, and even though mm -hmm. uh, she knows she has to, no service, yeah. she sends a text to Will that says, you'd better be okay or I'll kill you. <laughs> Gets that little, uh, you know, exclamation point that says it can't quite yeah. sound right. As soon as there's service again, it'll, it'll send. Try. Yes. If I'm dead, you are so dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, I already said, I have you. plenty of people to haunt. If I <laughs> um... It is possible that our connection really is just the five people who got tickets for the train. I just thought it was a... I'm just trying not to rule anything out because if we're going to figure out what is going on, we, we can't discard any well, possibilities. Our connection we... is the thread of fate. Yes, possibly. and now we are connected through fate i suppose but we are and, and in also, this together and that's what might matters I, might i remind everyone that some strange things have been happening recently like say neb talking to giant <laughs> wolves who've come to attack us and then walked away I or Fairuza crackling with sparkling lightning energy i may have broken a door <laughs> you definitely, definitely broke, broke a door you definitely, definitely broke a door and it was that's awesome i i didn't i honestly didn't think i was gonna go talk to a wolf but silas was talking about you know maybe these wolves are gonna talk to us it was and... like that wardrobe and you just like fall out in the snow and start talking to animals well and and like you said Maeve, we've had weird things happening so i i honestly thought i was gonna say something and this creature was maybe gonna understand me and then run away i wasn't expecting to have a conversation but it was really really neat i'm not gonna lie <laughs> it was terrifying but it was also really cool did you so see how big that new, wolf was that's a new skill <laughs> is anyone oh, yeah, else I've, discovering i have never been able to talk to any of the squirrels that have been around the brownstone so oh well, no. sure you have you can talk to any animal it's whether they talk but back did to they you. talk that's back yeah gift. okay well and whether they listen and no <laughs> none of them have ever listened and no it's not not in, a, in any of the times that I've tried to feed them nuts. It's never yeah. happened. All of the pigeons that made their nests under your air conditioner at the Brooklyn Brownstone. Oh, 
Uh, I speak from experience. <laughs> I would yell at the pigeons because they'd poop all over yeah. the, the the top floor. You know, I'd go up to the roof and try to look at the stars and there'd be poop all over the place. It didn't matter how often I told them. Maybe they understood me and they were doing it just to make me upset. That I that I'd believe. Maybe I have talked to pigeons. Okay. <laughs> but no, not really. No. Well, and um, Maeve, you had that wound that I just did. healed up. As you look over at your at your coat, there's still the puncture wounds. Some little bit of you know fluff is starting to come out of the, mm. the jacket where you can still see evidence of the just viciousness of that bite, but you feel absolutely fine. There's nothing nothing it's there. Still stained with your blood. Well, and, you... and same thing. I mean, I'm still feeling a, a bit of it here, but I'm certainly way better than I was when I woke up. So. Yeah, I have like healing powers. Same. Like, I, absolutely. <laughs> like, I just say things now, and it's like I, I, I feel, I feel the magic. Like, it, it's almost like, uh, you know, in some of the video games where you have like the floating uh, UI indicator to tell you where to go. It's almost like <laughs> as things are, are are coming out of my mouth, it's like I have a magic mouth. And, and then the things just float out and it's almost like I can see them. And even now I have made fun of people my entire life, many, many times, thousands, maybe millions of times I have made, uh, made, made fun of people. Now, most of the Surprising. time in a good, in a, most of the time in a good natured way, like just aggravating them. But like <laughs> now when I made fun of that smoke monster, when I did that, I could feel it was almost like it was like pulling it just slightly. It was like it was uh, it was like it was getting to it in a way that I have never been able to aggravate people before. And so this is an so your superpower story. is being annoying. Uh, oh, oh. I, I mean, I'm I, maybe, but 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 hey, lucky you. I'm still yeah. magical. If that annoyance We're razzing Silas tonight. <laughs> if that annoyance comes with healing, I will take all of the bad words you True. have to say. True. And you know what they say? Knowledge is power. And I think I'm starting to fully understand that from our recent encounters. I think all of my experience in life is while I learned a lot, it's coming into play a lot more than it ever has before. Yeah. I've always felt like I've been able to help people if they've got something they're trying to do. But it's been a lot more direct this mm -hmm. last day. And then, you know, fireflies. fireflies. Yeah. So, so was that you, Neb? I think so. That's happened once to me before, but I thought I was kind of imagining that it had happened. It was it was a while ago. But yeah, I I just was thinking real hard about how I was the only person who seemed to be able to see that monster in the corner and how I could really use a lot more light and then I got it. Lit it right up. And and that, well, the, the second time I lit it up, it took a I, I, I guess I had to, maybe I was talking to the fireflies? <gasps> and I didn't even know it? Yeah. So <gasps> Listen to that. Feruza is starting to believe. <laughs> truly is a magical place. Not so place. fast. Okay. I've always been relatively strong. Neb was not far off when she said I come from a family of lumberjacks. I might look like olive oil, but you know, I can, I can like my grandmother. My adoptive grandmother, I can swing an axe like anybody. But I will say, this level of strength is definitely came from something. Maybe it's from where we are now, or where it's whether it's from inside me, I I don't know and I'm not willing to rule the court's decision just now. I mean, I ain't gonna arm wrestle you. I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm saying I would be very, very nervous to do that. Like I've, I've seen. I mean, you were, you were trying to like tear the face off of a wolf like half a day ago. 
I mean, does that seem I, like something you would have done before we ended up in this place? Absolutely. I have looked in the faces of convicted killers. There's no way I would face something. I haven't even been to the zoo. I've never even been to the zoo. I like Aww. to at least think that the That's thing. A travesty. Yeah, the Bronx Zoo is really nice. <laughs> Well, now I'm going to go because you can speak to the animals. So maybe we can meet up <laughs> sometime and go and we can find out what the champions well, are thinking. Well, speaking of that, though, do we ever think we're getting back? Like, how, how, how do we get out of this place? Oh, well, I think what Robin said might be true. Maybe when we assemble this mirror and help this person, maybe that's our way back. Yeah, that's how it works in, you know, tabletop The distance RPGs. between these locations is not possible on foot. Well, we're magic now. So maybe <laughs> well, a magical we to... way will show itself. Can we figure out a way to make the train work? Or we're go going to need to find a different way. We not only need to make to the travel. train work, we need to clear the tracks of all those rocks. And I think we can just clearing. pick them up now, probably. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm up I mean, in the we're... trees, you hear, hoo, 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 hoo. Hmm. Now I don't know what they're saying right now. I'm the sorry. The woods, yeah, begin to get much more, you know, as it gets later, more and more alive. You you hear things, nothing approaching you, but you just start to hear there are this these forests are full of life. So oh, we should probably think about getting some rest. Who wants to take the first watch? Me. But there is something I have to do if you guys don't mind before we Settle down for a nice. Yeah, we'll, we'll take a round of bathroom breaks before everybody gets. <laughs> that too, Silas. But I don't know if you guys. I, I can't sleep in front of the mouth of an open uh, cavern unless I sort of ask to see if there's anyone actually in there. Do you mind if I? Is that like a thing that's happened before to you? No, I've never. I mean, you kind of said it like it was like a, a a rule of yours or something. Well, I mean, it's, it's... I mean, it's fine if it's a new rule. I'm just... Yeah, this is a I'll new place. A I think we're le learning lots of new rules. <laughs> I'm making it a rule. It's a good rule. So Bruza stands up like she... Okay. When she stands up, it's almost like she unfolds. Because yes. <laughs> <laughs> and she sort of goes over to the mouth of the yeah. mine. Uh, so you're going to leave the, the, uh, the fire and go over to the cave? To the mouth of the mine. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to, yeah, she I'm going to follow. Yell into it. You're going to go with me? I will Neb's go with you, uh, and what Neb will say is, uh, you should, probably shouldn't go alone, but you will notice as we walk over, she's doing a lot more looking up than yeah. she is looking where she's alone. going. <laughs> <laughs> so the two of you leave this warm little enclave, and immediately as you step up, <gasps> I'd like both of you to make constitution saving throws. Oh, and I And I you'll have, be a minus d4 to I'll Neb's. I'll be a minus d4 <laughs> for that, so here we go. How'd you do, Faruza? Oh, forget it. It's a... 15 minus, oh boy. Oh. You don't have to roll a d4 minus for one. The... You don't have to do, roll a d4, that's just Neb's thing. Oh, okay. So yeah, so yours is a 15, yeah, okay. So Feruza, yeah, you just kind of, you know, even with your, your skinny, skinny limbs, there's something <laughs> about the muscles or the way that you hold yourself. It just kind of keeps all that in a little bit. Go ahead, Neb, what was it? So I rolled a four, which gave me a five. And then, because my side really hurts, I rolled yes. a one, so oh, I have a four. Boy, breathing is hard in this cold air. As you breathe in, it just, your entire lungs, it's like, it again, freezes the moisture inside of your body. Um, you take two cold damage as you step out and wrap your arms around you, but the cold is in your body. If you stay close to Feruza as you two sort of trudge through the snow up to the entrance of this mine. I hope you don't mind. I'm, I'm going to stay really, really close, okay? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I figured I'd ask before personal space became a thing. You huddle in. You, you basically come up to her, like, waistline. <laughs> and have the two of you as you walk over. Mm -hmm. um, so you can, you can, you know, use, <laughs> use Feruza to draft a little bit. As you, as you She's, get okay. <laughs> She's not very wide, but you can get, you know. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, that's better. So, yeah. Thank you. Remind you, so what you see is you kind of come closer through the snow and it gets, you know, it gets deep here. I mean, these are snow drifts that kind of come up in front. So, you know, your feet kind of, you know, fold into the snow as you, you, you go over. Um, it is, it is, it is wide by about probably six feet wide, four feet tall, very, very low entrance. Um, posts and lintels of just wood that's been kind of, you know, stuck into the rock and dirt. Um, you do see Steve carved into the lintel on top. And there's just icicles hanging down across it like bars. Is there any space in between the icicles that I could you not go try in? To squeeze, oh, you just, just want to... I just want to duck down, because you said it's a four foot high yeah. opening. And you and have I'm to only five, a little. so yeah. a I'm just going to look in. Yeah. yeah, go ahead and give me a perception. Ooh, that's a 23. Ooh. That's a 23. Ooh. As you look in and, and you, you know, I think all this time in your life, stargazing and spending time outside at night, you, you can see pretty far into this area. It's fairly deep. Um, you can see that where there's, you know, no snow, just sort of within inside, there are two tracks that head off sort of out into the darkness behind here. And you think you can't make out very much of it, but towards the back, you see some kind of mechanism at the back of this tunnel, maybe about 50 feet deep. Um, so at the back, you can just see it without being too um, specific with that. However, as you lean your head closer to these icicles looking in, you just hear a <laughs> as a nail reaches out and tries to cross across the top of your face. Let's see. Oh. Well, well, well. 17 you... hit you. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Do you yelp or something? Oh, yeah. <laughs> she will. Well, she will. We'll uh, that fine. is three slashing and two cold. So five total. Um, uh, as you lean your I head I don't in, yell because it doesn't drop me. <laughs> it doesn't okay. drop me. She yelps. And as you look over, you can see that an icicle has sort of taken its legs and arms down. There's little wings and little things and a long hooked nose and it's peering right at Neb's face as it runs its icy finger across her face, dripping blood that immediately freezes along the side of her face. And we are in initiative. Please ah. roll. Ah. Neb oh my God. <laughs> we both oh. scream. Yeah. Oh, there's we will. Okay. Then the rest of you, let's everyone roll initiative, but we're going to give a round before you guys can come over to help. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Nothing like an icicle growing nails. Nothing <laughs> like an icicle growing nails. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Robin. Nope. Six. Six for Robin. Um, Neb. Um, Twelve. Twelve for Neb. Maeve. Thirteen. Thirteen for Maeve. Silas. Twelve. Twelve for Silas. And Feruza. 11. 11 for Feruza. All right. Um... <laughs> the amiable laugh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Dang it. <laughs> Two more of these icicles sort of drop down off of the top, sort of opening their arms and limbs, stretching out. They look towards you. Their whole sound, it almost, the noises they make almost sound like cracking uh, ice, you know, as, it, as they sort of pull themselves apart out of their sort of frozen state. Uh, two of them are going to run towards you, Feruza. Question, <laughs> was sitting around the fire a short rest? Please. It was not, I mean, yeah, we'll give you an hour. Go ahead, take your short rest. Mm -hmm. um, so Neb and uh, Feruza, if there was something you wanted to do, retcon for that, you can. Okay. That okay. wasn't gonna help me with what okay. just happened. So yeah. <laughs> Rhett, I mean, uh Feruza has yeah. just, she keeps it sort of in her pants. Yes. She does have her axe. She has her, her axe. Fantastic. Yeah. Feruza, I have a twenty to hit you. Dirty twenty. Oh gross. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You will take ooh, five slashing damage and three cold damage, which I know you are resistant. Two and one. So you'll take three. down to one. Yeah. Um, so yes, you'll take six total um, out of that. Uh, the other one, however, comes in front of you and just goes 
and this cold air bursts out of its mouth towards you. Uh, please, uh, the two of you, make dexterity saving throws, Neb and Feruza. Okay, yeah. That's an eight. Feruza? 17. 17. Feruza, um, well, we'll start here. Neb, you mm -hmm. take eight cold damage. <gasps> Feruza, you take four, but down to two. Um, as it just chills you to the bone. Uh, Neb, you can feel the frost on your face um, as you know you continue to stare into the eyes of this this icy, almost transparent creature. I do you. not continue to stare into its eyes as, <laughs> you do not. as I shudder and oh, fall no. into the snow. Neb has died four times or something already. I, I will say that, uh, fortunately, I love, Neb, I love her. She's making... like, Fortunately, I will be making death saving throws, but there was a moment. <laughs> Nev is the best. She's like, oh, you're looking into the mine? I'll go right with you. <laughs> yeah. so, Neb, as your eyes roll back in your head and you collapse to your knees, falling over on your side in the snow. Maeve, you heard the scream? I'm going to stand up and, and try and run over yep, to see what's happening. You were able to make happening. it there. You know, you, you didn't park too far away probably gave you like 20 feet so within your distance to move over there um you you get a, a glimpse of these crazy it's hard to tell they even to you still look like icicles but they seem to have weird formations that begin to look like uh more like creatures and then you see one of them you know move i look at the one through. that that tried to move mm -hmm. up toward the one that's closest to neb yes. i say no no <laughs> i will start with no Fantastic. So, Remind me what I do. Is it a saving uh, it's, it's No, it's, a, it's no. an attack. It's an attack. Go ahead. It's uh, so a 25 to hit. That'll hit. Um, and it's going to take... Uh, it takes one point. <laughs> what type? A force. A force damage. Great. Um, so yeah, it, 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 you, you look at it and you say no, and it kind of goes turns and locks eyes with you. Okay, you're on my list. <laughs> uh, so that will be... Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, no, it's, it's. I have my eye on you. On eye on you, yeah. Okay. You. Do I make anything for that? I uh, no, guys up. Not at this Shut point. I should, have, I should have done that first, but it hadn't made eye contact with me, so no now worries. it has, and it's now it you. is in... Uh, I have my eye on it. Fantastic. Um, and I call out for help yes. for Neb. All right, uh, Neb, please make a death oh. saving throw. Sure. Also, I'm going to call out to Firuza. Do we want to run away? <laughs> but we grab her and run away. We'll, we'll see. We're getting. We're getting. Yeah. Neb we'll get Lauren, to Firuza. Yeah. On your turn, Firuza, you have that okay. option. Neb, death saving throw. Yep. That's a nine. Cold. That's one in the fail. She's cold. Even Maeve, as you look over, and Feruza, as you're, you're kind of, you know, shaking off that little bit of cold that came your way, you just see her, you know, if she was kind of shivering, maybe her shivering even dies down. It starts to get a little scary that she, her body is going into some kind of shock. Silas. Silas, uh, if you could hear right now, is kind of muttering under his breath, mm. fire, flame, something, come on. You don't don't fail right now but 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 nothing's happening and so like now that he sees that these magical words that he thinks he could say anything and make it happen is not working um <laughs> he is going Free to action. is is there any um are there any planks uh in the fire that have ends that uh i would not badly hurt myself by grabbing it out of the fire um are you're wearing some kind of gloves or mittens yes you are okay. Yeah. Um, there all there are ends that are not burning, but they are all hot, hot, hot. Okay. So it um, will be a save to to grab it. Uh, understood on mm -hmm. that. Uh, mm -hmm. So that is the the first scan there. And then is there anything flammable near the mouth of the mine? There is not. No. Okay. Um, so Silas is going to grab one of those. Okay. And you said save. Constitution saving throw. Okay. Um, uh, 
That is a uh, 16. 16. You grab it. It's it's hot. It's warm. You can feel it, but your mittens are really helping. And you think, you know, as soon as you kind of ooh, ooh, kind of pull it out of the fire and it cools off a little bit in the snow, you can get a good grip on it. And it's still quite, you know, hot and burning at the other end. And then Silas just kind of says, well, I used to be a waiter in the <laughs> restaurant and I was used to holding hot plates. And he's kind of saying that as he starts yes. to run, yes. run, run over uh, <laughs> to where uh, Neb is. And then uh, he is going to, at this point in time, uh, just, um, um, I, I don't know like what is going to be an action here, but he uh -huh. is going to be waving the fire and trying I to essentially cover Neb Okay. And then if he can take an action, he, he will take an action. So you're using it to kind of try to chase Distract, them off. Kind deter. Of thing. Okay, so I think that will be your action. It'll okay. be a um, intimidation. Okay. That's great. Um, all right. So you'll we'll take do... it. But you'll still have your bonus. Uh, let me check a thing real quick to see what kind of is it a bonus action. Uh no, okay. All right. Just wanted to check. No worries. Check. Um, all right. So that is a, um, that's a 22 on intimidation. 22. Yeah. So as you come running forward, you know, what are you, what are you saying? I, I, I'm, I'm okay. shouting it and saying, oh, this is the moment for just ice, just this. <laughs> and oh, I'm hovering over now and I'm like <laughs> w waving it, trying Terrible. to scare them away. Yes. You run over and you do see a number of them. <laughs> Kind of recoil as they they rock back and they're almost like um like pterodactyls or bats they're almost sort of walking on their elbows a little bit it's that sort of funny uh, uh, kind of noise and everything as they move back away from the the fire a bit uh anything else Silas? that is it okay feruza okay so got, there are three gone. standing in front of you uh you know one is closer to neb two are closer to you but they're all right there silas has gotten them to kind of they haven't left your range but they've you know they're sort of backing off a little bit from him okay so i mean so neb is basically right down in front of me yeah down. you guys were close yeah okay so she's just gonna uh like she sees uh, silas and mave run over she's just gonna like she leans over yeah she sort of leans over neb and she looks at mave because she heard what mave said when she came running and she goes no <laughs> and she has her, she has her axe and she's literally just gonna swing the broad side of it the broad she, side she of it pulls it out and she's just swinging it like this basically okay okay so you're going for bludgeoning damage rather than slashing yes gotcha Go ahead and make an attack. Okay. Come on, baby. That's a 12. It hits. <laughs> um, yes. Oh. I was going to say, damage. but. <laughs> okay. See. See, it takes four. Four? bludgeoning damage yeah or bludgeoning so as the, the the first swing of your axe you run up and go no and you just sort of backhand yeah the flat mm -hmm. side of your axe against it you see it shatter it you know it still sort of has two legs and and one wing but the other side where you hit it has just flung off um into pieces behind you it looks far more damaged than you even expected okay and right when she does that like she's she's shaken but she's she's watching Maeve. She sees Silas. She's you know knowing yeah. that Neb is at her feet. And as she does that, like there's like I said before, like that sort of electric sort of like if you looked at her mm -hmm. eyes and her teeth, you see yeah. these like sparks going. And the whatever slashing she took yes. from that, maybe it swears it on her neck or where is the slashing? Was it that thing? Oh, that from hit before? Her? Yeah, from the thing mm -hmm. that hit her before. Well, the thing that hit her before was a cold. Oh, the cold, that was cold a little bit damage. of the cold okay, damage. Um, so yeah, oh no, that's right. One of them did. No, no, no. Yeah, one of them did claw at you. That's right. So yeah, bit, we'll say bit. it went it went across your neck. Um, and again, like you can see, like the striations of claws across your neck there, and, and the little again immediately frozen blood as it started to come out. So yes, what happens <laughs> to them? Okay, so um, just as reaction, sort of her, yeah. um, like maybe like so you, you see some more warmth. With the, mm. uh, with the electricity just sort of crawl through her skin. And she seems to be a little bit more vibrant and her body sort of heals itself for, oh gosh, I can't see anything. 
for nine plus two for oh she completely Woo! is back this the thing it's just like, stitches itself back again especially in the in the little bit of light from uh silas's torch that he's carrying on <laughs> his, his handmade torch the she looks like adjusted. lit from within <laughs> feruza just like <gasps> like every bit of energy and and yes all of this you watch it uh you know no, not neb but uh <laughs> silas and Maeve. <laughs> I will hear all the stories later and they'll be awesome. <laughs> you quite literally watch these these claw marks just sort of disappear along her neck. Again, you can still see some of the blood that came out sort of staining her neck, but the actual wounds just disappear. It's like those wintergreen lifesavers. <laughs> it sparks. <laughs> but that's like much they more they extreme. Or, <laughs> or Pop Rocks and yeah. Diet Coke or whatever. <laughs> Exactly. You eat him in the dark. Um, all right, Robin. Oh, sorry, was that uh, it, Perusa? I'm sorry, anything else, Perusa? Uh, well, that, she's just gonna look at Maeve and say, we, 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 we can take her and run. We, what are these things? And that's just it. Okay, okay. Thank I you, sorry, No. <laughs> Go ahead, Robin. Uh, Robin hears this commotion and doesn't think twice. She reaches in her bag and she pulls out a knitting needle. <laughs> and she, she's, she's gonna poke it into the fire for just a couple seconds and then she's gonna run towards this thing and just try to stab it okay the one the one you're all focusing on the one that scratched the, the one that is not damaged the one that's not damaged okay you got it so there's three over there um we have the one that's been sort of shattered a bit that's over closer to neb and then there's the two others uh so yeah neither of those two have been damaged so go ahead so you're a little slower to get up you know it's expected yes a little oh. And you just, but then suddenly, rah, trudging through the snow in your yellow boots with your knitting needle that's, you know, glowing hot at the end. Uh, go ahead and make an attack roll. That is a 17. A 17 will hit. Give Thanks. us some damage and we will, uh, we'll throw a little bit of heat on there. Okay, so that is three points of piercing damage. Three piercing. Okay, how, now how roll a like d4 to... for some extra hot hot damage fire damage two two okay all right so as you run forward and you, you just impale this thing from the back uh, 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 it sort of says as it you know kind of it's, its shoulder blades go together as you pierce right between the two uh, and again it kind of flaps flaps and starts to turn around and look at you robin anything else uh robin is going to uh once again just say okay the tennis dance is the ready stance, and she's gonna expeditiously <laughs> retreat. <laughs> I love it. Robin turns and just <laughs> bamps back to the campfire. Is that Peace. where you're going, Robin? There you yeah, go. Yeah, right back, back to the campfire. campfire. Stab. <laughs> yes, hey, Off she goes. Protect All her. All right. Um, at end of the round here, I just like real quick, uh, Maeve and Silas, please make Constitution saving throws. Mm. Is it a spell or magical effect? It's just cold. This is just the cold. I should have done it at the end of your turns. We'll do it. Uh, 16. You're good. Maeve? 10. 10. <laughs> Maeve's going to take a little bit of cold here. Ooh, five. Cold damage. Oh. Maeve. Oh, it's just, I guess, you know, the, 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 you'd gotten so warm by the fire, you're melting the snow and it's getting your clothes wet, which is, of course, even worse as oh, you start to just so feel a little bit of that. All right, thank you for that little retcon. We are back up to the one on Neb, the one that was sort of destroyed that you have your eye on, um, uh, Maeve. Uh, it, you know, even with the one wing kind of missing, it still sort of hisses at each of you. Um, oh, I think it, what is it like? Well, it, it likes, that. go ahead. It had made eye contact with me. I know, I'm gonna say, I think so, it's still you, Maeve, you are still the most interesting. Actually. Yeah? If it wants to do this, we can we can try and do this. We can tango. <laughs> do I have disadvantage or am I just good? Uh, no, you do not. Okay. I, I'm sorry, my other computer isn't working, so I don't have your sheets. It's up. fine. I'll put it in chat. You just help me. Just so uh, you have I'm just going to ask you and you'll tell me what to do. So yeah, so it's going to instead <laughs> right up towards you. And again, you can see as it raises its good wing, it's got, you know, four talony claws that then, you know, it attempts to rake across the front of your body. Ooh, that's pretty darn good. 18 to hit. That will hit. 
Okay, this may drop me. We'll see. Mm -hmm. um, actually, though, uh, just in case it makes a difference, because it yeah. might stop this from happening. Yes. Um, I say, don't touch me, creep. Okay. Um, and I will. Um, uh, th it is suddenly surrounded by um, my my taser zaps it. Yes. <laughs> Um, it needs to make a dexterity saving throw. Okay, here we go. Oh, I did pretty good. Uh, 17. Uh, that is going to work, but it will still take damage. Sweet, take half. And 10. Uh, it's going to take half of 19. Half so. of 19? <laughs> but it's not because it, it's heat damage, it's fire damage? It is fire damage. It does not like fire damage. Um, as it turns to you and brings its fingers out to rake them across. Now, is this a reaction to a hit? It is a reaction yes. to being damaged. To being mm -hmm. damaged. So you're still going to take this damage. Let me let's go through that real quick then. Um, so that is four slashing. Oh, gosh. this And one me. cold. Oh, I have one. Savage. Oh, no, I, have, I have a couple. You have a couple. Okay. No, okay. You're still up. So all of the reactionary thing and will still work. As it, if it... Yes, so hold on. When yeah. I, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so just rid of it. So yeah, you take that damage as it slashes across, but then you turn to it. You, you. Don't touch me, creep. Don't touch me, because it did. <laughs> and immediately, just right in front of you, it shatters into a million pieces. I'd like everyone out there, uh, Feruza, Silas, and Maeve, I need all of you to oh. make dexterity saving throws. So as this happens, it. though, I do, um, yes. I pull mm -hmm. its life essence you do and draw it into myself for five points of healing yeah. so as you look at it explode and the shatters of ice come forward and try to hit you you also sort of heal up a little bit along your and face. That, then i uh it's a 15. it's a 15 for for mave save. mave um you're gonna take half uh silas 18. 18 you'll take half Feruza. 11. you will take half neb unfortunately oh yeah that's I... another fail I just, I just you got hit pin well. cushion, don't I? Yeah. You just got pin cushioned on this one. Um, all right, hold on. Safe. That's an eight on the die. You each take four slashing. As it explodes in front of you. Um, the second one that's in the area turns to the three of you. Um, and it goes. <sighs> oh, no. Blowing cold in your direction please make dexterity saving throws <laughs> not you Nick. it's gonna it's direct <laughs> towards the other the other three it's a little okay. higher we're gonna avoid you okay <laughs> feruza 21 21 in fact i'm gonna offer would one of you like to fall in front of neb maybe uh, yeah. yes. all Silas of you definitely will. okay we're gonna say all three of you as you see it coming, having noticed that what this thing does, all three of you throw your bodies on top of Neb. Um, yes. This is going to make, so uh, we had an 18 from Feruza. 21 from Feruza. Sorry, 21 from Feruza, 18 from Maeve. Silas? Uh, 12. No, a 12. No, I'm a dirty 20. Oh, dirty 20. Okay, so you're all, you're all good enough. Um, you are going to take half um, on this. Let's just keep these dice out. Two damage, not too bad. So you all take two damage as you throw your collective bodies on top of Neb, protecting her from this blast of cold air. The third one <laughs> <laughs> runs up to Silas, who is now you know covering Neb's body, and with its claws, it's going to rake across the back of your body. Oh my god! That is a critical hit. Oh, oh jeez. Oh my god, oh my god. Well, we, we were thinking we were in purgatory. Maybe, maybe we're now Seven at... Seven Silas. Yeah, <laughs> and six cold. So 13 total. Yep. Now Are you up? Unconscious. You're down. <laughs> Silas, you know, the, the Feruza and Maeve, you feel the weight of his body as it falls down on top of Neb. Maeve. I am, I want to get us out of here. Yeah. Honestly, I'm not strong yeah. enough to drag them, I don't think. 
Butch. Okay. Well, Neb and Silas have uh, death saving throws coming I, up. After may you. I use um, a medicine check? I suppose you on, could do a medicine Neb. check on Neb. Okay, go ahead. Give me a medicine check. Nineteen. Nineteen. Neb, you don't wake up, but your death saving throw, your days of death saving throws are over. That's um, good because are, I was on two already. You were on two fails, <laughs> which is bad. You are stabilized where you are right now, but still unconscious. Um, Maeve, anything else yes. you'd like to do? Bonus action. Um, and can... I don't think I have much I can do here. Um, I mean, I did a I, lot. Can I? Uh, can I move trying to drag her? Um, me, she's or? underneath Silas. Um, so they got kind of the two. We can say, I mean, he sort of rolled off maybe next to her. So you've got the two of them there. So if you want to, with your movement, um, grab her legs and pull, uh, we'll do it. It'll just require a strength check to see if you can. I mean, I am only five feet tall. And yeah. And, and, there's, and there's an op attack in there, of course. Okay. Uh, no, I, I won't be able to handle an op attack. Okay. So. So you're sticking in the pocket. All right. Uh, Neb, you are fine. Silas, please make a death saving throw. Oh. So yeah. Did you say Silas? Yes, Silas. May I, may I, may mm -hmm. I use them just to get back out of the way, at least of the range of their. You, you want, you, if you would now, like having to... seen one, yeah. what happens when one shatters and, and the way yes. that they've been attacking, <laughs> may I get back out of the way of that? Um, you can, you will take the op attack by disengaging. I'm not, I shouldn't be close enough to, I was at range with my stuff. No is 120 foot range. Okay. Um, it came up and but clawed you and that's the one that you killed. Oh, that's right. That's you the killed one that one. I'm trying yeah. to say thank you. Um, okay. You're, oh, but you, you threw yourself on top of Neb. Maybe that's why. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. That's why I'm in there. So. Okay. So yeah, so it will be an op attack to step away okay. from that. You stick in there? Mind. Yeah, I got to stick here. All right. Silas, Desi. I, I rolled a 20 on the Desi. A 20. Uh, nice. Yay. Oh, so we're going to stay automatically oh. stabilized. Th thank you yeah. for having the good rolls because the, I've been having the bad ones. And so, the, the, like. The 20 should be up with one, right? Uh, we can. We can do that one. I, I, I don't I don't know. remember what the official D&D &D thing is. Sometimes I give two successes. Sometimes I just say you're stabilized. But we'll go with up with one. That's fine okay. with me. Up. In one. All right. So Silas, um, something in you. Maybe you. You know. You tell me. Do you hear your grandfather's voice? I don't know what it is that just tells you to like get with it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, actually, what uh, what happens with uh, Silas is he is is out for just a little while, and yeah. kind of when his eyes begin to wake up, he uh, swears that he sees a uh, fox yeah. kind of uh, just tiptoeing in the back of the mine and he mm. looks up and he just kind of like squints and, uh, and and he uh he kind of groggily shakes his head and the fox isn't there anymore okay i love it all right feruza you see uh you know you see that neb is breathing steadily even if she's still unconscious but you see silas's eyes burst open you see mave there still sort of holding on to neb taking in the scene uh and robin had come and stabbed and went back to camp what would you like to do for Okay, um, Feruza was, at Silas, when you sort of come to, you realize that Feruza had sort of sprung into action when she saw Maeve looking like she was gonna grab Neb. She was thinking, okay, well then I will roll Cyrus, Silas. So right. you see like, <laughs> you see Feruza like standing over you about to roll like your body with, while having her eyes on that last creature. The last there are creature. Two, two left two left one is damaged one one really is damaged one is not and what it what are they look are they they're noticing all oh yeah us, they're right? watching all you all. okay um she notices that silas is like awake and um so quickly she just says like she like she shakes silas get up get up we have to get out of here there, this this is not an empty mine and then she's gonna grab Neb. Okay. She's still unconscious. So what yes. I want to do is I basically want to, you know, she locks eyes with Maeve because she right. knows exactly. And she wants to pick up, like, and throw Neb over her shoulder. Fireman's carry. Let's yeah. do this. I know I'll get to I know I'm going to take the op, but. I know. Um, but you'll, you're, so you grab Neb. Um, we're going to say with your strength and Neb's, you know, you know, slightness, um, <laughs> you can do that no problem. So that's, that's okay. fairly, you know, you're using your action to take her and go. Um, so we won't have a check for you. Uh, where are you going? 
back. Uh, as far, I mean, I want to take Neb away and then I'll have to come back. So not to the campfire necessarily, but like as far as you can get in the opposite yeah. direction. Okay. Uh, as you grab her, what do you say? Do you say anything as you start to run away? Um, she actually she just looks at Maven and says, okay. I'm just going to take her. Okay. And then like, you know, there's go, go, go. Right back. Yeah. as you turn and run away, one <laughs> reaches out, scraping at your ankles. Natural one, Oof. it misses and tumbles over itself on the ground, uh, lying cool. prone now, is that one. <laughs> yes. Um, as you run as far, using all of your movement and your, your bonus action and everything to get you know a good like 45, 60 feet away from this, mm. uh, from this conflict. Um, that is it for Feruza, unless anything else, Feruza. Nope, she's just gonna basically nicely yes. lay Neb lay down. down. <laughs> As you sort of crouch down, laying yeah, laying Neb down on the, the fresh snow over the tracks and kind of look back, you can see the fire in the distance. You can see this little huddle of your friends in front of the mine entrance as you just sort of hold Neb cradled in your arms on the ground. Robin. Robin sees her friends falling to the ground and in desperate trouble. Uh, and she's just gonna take just a step forward and she's going to look at the one that is damaged the one that was damaged by the axe yeah is that one still up uh yeah. yes um yes that one wait 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 mm -hmm. that was axe this one was this one i think might have been dam. well it's damaged yes there's one that's mm -hmm. damaged and one that's not okay so going go for, for the, the one that is damaged damaged and she's just gonna say <sighs> Do you know what happens to an icicle when it's struck by lightning? The same thing as everything else. <laughs> yes, Miss Robin. <laughs> I'm so and sad I'm cast missing this lightning lure. Right <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's lightning lure. So what's going to happen is I need uh -huh. a strength saving throw. Oh yeah, my little ice guys, so strong. <laughs> oh, it's oh it's bad. Uh, that is a seven. So this thing is going to be pulled with my lightning 10 feet towards me. <laughs> and then it's going to take lightning damage. Oh, my God. Me. Okay. Uh, yeah, so give me the damage and then tell me what this looks like. Okay. Um, oof, that's not bad. Uh, six points of lightning damage as Robin just, in her kind of rage, she just feels this. her fingertips kind of start to static electricity and then suddenly she's just gonna reach out and she's just gonna be like i need you here now and she's just gonna pull so as and you then, reach and out and these little like... yeah these little bolts kind of come out of your fingers and uh, kind of knock into this thing but it also seems to almost like it came around the back and sort of knocked it forward towards you um as it kind of was knocked along the ground it is now 10 feet away from Maeve and Silas, and and would say another and ten feet from you. You know, it's sort of in between. The well, two it would be. I think I would have pulled yeah. it as close to me as possible, even if that means putting it within five feet of. Yeah, me. so you were about twenty feet. If you were at the campfire, you were twenty okay. feet from them. So now you've pulled it ten. So it's ten from you, ten then, from them. Then retcon, I would have okay. moved. Okay. In order. So to you get would be it within five feet. five feet. Okay, great. Yep. I got. I got to be to take get the damage. So. You got it. Okay, great. Yes. Then you so got it. I I will take that and put them in <laughs> danger of me now. I love it. It's right next to you. Yeah. Um. All right, Robin. Anything else? Uh, that is interesting. Yes. I still have expeditious <laughs> retreat on, so I'm wondering if. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to run back to Neb uh, or as far as I can. Yeah, get. as you can get. Um, yeah. I mean, you, you, you probably, you know, you, you probably can't make it totally towards them because yeah. you'll get your 30 feet, right? With that. Yeah. So yeah. you can make it almost there. But as you sort of, as it gets pulled towards you, as it's still sort of disoriented and trying to figure out what it is, you just, again, bamf out of there. You are running off through the snow, uh, just a little yellow rain boot down. <laughs> <flops> off. Uh, <laughs> No, so as you make your way towards Neb, you see Feruza kind of turn and look, seeing you approaching uh, from that direction. All right. The one that you just left uh, standing there, um, as it kind of gets its senses, <sighs> kind of turns around trying to figure out what's going on. Um, it seems to have nothing 
to really attack right there. It feel, you know, it's going to kind of begin to run its way towards you, except it rises in the air and starts to flap its icy wings following in your direction. It does not, however, get to you yet. Um, this one is lying down prone on the ground. He's still over by Maeve. Let's see. He gets up, Maeve. As you are standing there, everyone else, is, you know, Silas is there too, right? Yes. You two are still there, Maeve and Silas. I mean, you are the one that did that. Uh, it's going to run up towards, in your direction, Maeve, with its claws exposed. <gasps> that is a nine. That will miss. Yes! As it oh. scrapes out towards you, you know, whatever you do to just kind of dance out of its way, oh. you know, it's 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 humiliated. It, you know, rolled on the ground. It missed all these, you know, it is definitely in your sphere, but you are just able to avoid it. Neb, uh, <laughs> you're still unconscious. I'm having this this lovely dream about you... <laughs> one of the last times I I saw my great grandfather and yes. he was telling a story. We're on the roof of the brownstone. He's telling a story about some of the constellations, and I really want to listen to him. But it's also freezing out here, and I don't know why he has to tell the story on the roof. Can't we go inside? <laughs> Um, something in that, that memory, that vision that you're having in this is unconscious state in some weird moment that you don't think happened. You're not sure whatever it is. He seems to turn to you and he looks you dead in the eye, something sort of rare, odd, weird about this moment. And he says, Neb, you must always remember to check all paths as the vision begins to disappear. Silas. So can I get a sit rep a little bit ar around me? So there's just the yes. one now? Nope, there's still two. <laughs> uh, one the, is damaged, one is The second is further away though, Yes, right? the second is yeah. further away. It got kind of, it, it traveled a little bit and got, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, that's right. There's the one that followed Robin and is flying. Then right. there's the one right next to you and Maeve. Okay, but it is still within range. It of is, okay. it is in within range of you. The one in the air is the one that's been damaged. The one near you looks healthy and fine. As much as, you know, icy, icicle creatures can. The smart Did I skip thing... you, Maeve? I'm so sorry. Hold on. Um, I think sure I might I have. You were at the top ones. here. I think I skipped you. Um, oh. Sorry, Ooh. Silas. Do you mind? No, don't okay. mind at all. No worries. My decision. Okay, good. Sorry about that. Maeve, you were up first. I'm sorry about that. I would like to GTFO. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I am going to uh, disengage <laughs> and run. Okay. All right. Where are you running? Uh, back to the fire. Back to the fire. All right. So you, again, this thing reached out and slashed at you and you just, you know, whatever you did, belly button, just right by your coat. You then dodge and kind of swirl in the snow and make your way to the side, beelining it past, you know, where Robin just, Robin just left. You went by off towards the campsite. Uh, anything else, Maeve? Uh, no, that's going to take all of Okay, that takes all your things. Do. Now Neb has her vision and now Silas, your turn. It's just you and an okay. animated yeah, no, ice no, no, that's perfect because uh, Silas wasn't going to leave Maeve, but, okay. but Maeve has not left. Um, mm -hmm. And so uh, so then Silas is going to also disengage. And so you okay. see Silas uh, uh, just says, you two bit Bobby Drake looking. And then he uh, he's going to drop to the ground and then he's going to say steamroller. And he starts rolling a little bit to get out. <laughs> you know, like, uh, you know, out of uh, attack range. And then yeah. he's going to roll back up to his feet and he's going to take off running back toward the fire. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So the two of you do this, like, funky, awkward dance thing where there's <laughs> rolling and there's crouching, but it awkward is in the eye of the beholder. Oh, yeah, definitely. It looks super cool in your, you know, <laughs> mind. Um, but not in mine. Birth. Mine, it, mine. It looks like I am in a lot of pain. <laughs> oh, no. As Maeve I'm, leaves, you know, trickles of blood in the snow as she runs yep. away. Um, mm -hmm. But yes, you kind of do this rock and roll kind of thing, and you both are able to sort of separate yourselves and run off back towards the fire. Anything else, Silas? Uh, and then at that moment, um, he's um, also going to just simply say, 
yeah, Miss Robin, don't think I didn't notice that X-Men reference. And uh, with that, uh, as a bonus action, uh, Bardic Inspiration. Hey, Robin cool. has been inspired. Perfect. All right, Feruza. You're okay, so... 45 feet away from, you know, you're 45 feet from the one that was by Maven Silas. You're only, mm -hmm. let's say, like 20 from the one that's flying and following Robin. And uh, so, okay, so basically where the robin is the one that's in trouble right now everybody else has gone right i basically. mean you know they're 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 only maven silas only ran you know 20 feet away from this thing you don't know how how far they can go but they're not they're not super far but they're by the fire which makes you feel a little comfortable oh okay so um bruise is watching everything yeah. happen and she realizes that everyone is is retreating so yes. she probably should not go back but i i my thing is i don't want to leave robin like uh -huh. fighting monsters on her uh -huh. own so but she wants to she thinks to herself like she wants to get neb all the way back to the fire she's like i think we need to get near the fire it will avoid the fire because she's basically you know these are these are ice creatures i think if we get as close to the fire as possible so in do i it does robin look like she's in Trouble. It's following her. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, you know what? She's gonna um she sees This is the one Ned... that's injured is the one that's following Robin. Um okay. so you can see it's you know, as it flies, it has a little like hitch. You know, it's a little slower, you know, than you would have expected it, but it's it's following Robin and it's definitely wounded. Okay. She's she sees that Neb is fine and mm -hmm. out of, you know, direct danger. Mm -hmm. She sees Maeve take off. Silas roll away. She's gonna run, stand up, yeah, and like you know, hoist her act. She's gonna run after the one that okay. is following Robin. And okay. as as she's running toward Robin, like her eyes have that lightning and electricity that like you see them in her eyes. Yeah. And she's look, and then she sort of glances at her her axe for like a second. And again, you see the little lightning come off the the, the tip of the blade of the axe. Yeah. And she's like. And she says, like, under her breath, like, I know this is not the only thing you're, that I can use you for. And she tips it upside down. And she swings it almost like we're talking Tiger Woods golf swing. <laughs> and brings it right at that one. Okay. <laughs> um, amazing. Uh, I'll offer two free action would you want to you know like slap neb or attempt to wake neb up at all oh yeah before you true. leave yeah i mean okay I just I before you leave free her, action she, like you give her a good um, shake yeah like a little okay. bit of a shake um yeah. hopefully i mean I'm, i don't know if Maeve and silas noticed where feruza left neb maybe they can pick her up on the way back and bring her toward the fire maybe Okay, I mean, I, know, um, I mean, the so Maeve and Silas are way over by the fire. You guys are like oh. forty-five feet from them. It's not on the way necessarily. It's sort of Robin and the and the creature are in between you guys and the fire. But okay, gotcha. You give gotcha. you give you know Neb a little nudge with Neb. You know, begins to kind of allows you to kind of come out of that vision that you were having and kind of gather your surroundings as Feruza. Oh, Why am I looking at paths? Oh, oh, <laughs> what I missed? I missed a lot. As Feruza, you, you know, pull out your, your ax and Tiger Wood style sort of swing up at it because it's up in the air. So it's in the follow through of that swing that you yes. hit it again with the blunt side. You're going with your bludgeoning from it. Yes. And I love it. I think it's she cool. swings. Yes. She's point. <gasps> you call your shot. <laughs> yes. I got call you. Shot. All right, go ahead and give me an attack roll. Okay. Let's see. Plus two. Shoot. That is uh, nine plus. Wait, let's see. Hold on. Yeah, that's just an 11. It hits. Uh, yes. Oh. They're just ice. Come on. <laughs> They're just ice. They can't hurt you. They're just mm -hmm. ice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not it's like hard. three of you almost died. <laughs> no, 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 no. She's just laughing. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Three of you almost died. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Go ahead, totally Farusa. What is your damage? Oh my gosh. Plus two. Let's see. That is. Oh, it's nine. Nine damage, and it's bludgeoning. Ooh. Yeah. As you swing this up in the air, you run past Robin because Robin's still about 10 feet away. You get up right under it. The 
far end of your swing, you just like a like a freaking you know paddle ball, you know, or what is it, the, the wickets, right? Just the whole thing shatters into ice and just goes flying out into space. Please give me a dexterity saving throw, Feruza, as some of the ice falls back to the earth near you. Yes. Oh, good. Nineteen. Nineteen. You take half of this. Uh, four. It's still four. Um, and this is okay. slashing. Four slashing. Two. No, it's slashing, not cold. So you'll. T- it, I rolled the eight. You'll take four. I have a. Uh... Oh, oh yes, you have yes two. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Like... She got. She got. She got. Uh, right, energetic. I'm sorry, I, yes. I forgot. Yes, you had. You're all sparkly. Yes. Um, <laughs> the sparkle. <laughs> her. We should rename it. It's, it's the sparkle. I'm going to sparkle now. She has I'm going to sparkle. Oh, God, I'm going to sparkle. Oh, fantastic. Yes, you only take two of that mm-hmm. slashing um, as it explodes in the air in front of you. Anything nice. else, Faruza? That's it for me. I All mean, right. yeah, that's it for me. Fantastic. This is going to yell to Robin, get out of here. Yeah. That's it. All right. Uh, I think, again, I don't know how I did this. I skipped Silas. We're going back to Silas. <laughs> Is it not Maeve's turn again? Uh, no. So Maeve goes at first, then Neb, Silas, Veruza. So I just... Oh, no, you did. You gave Bardic Inspiration. I, I, yes, right. I, I, I steamrolled. Dis- I, did, I, I, I yeah. did do you. I just forgot. Okay, good. All right. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Just moments of confusion. Um, <laughs> Robin, your turn, Robin. Uh, Robin is going to see that Feruza has gone this way as she's kind of coming this way. Yes, <laughs> you guys, just passing the night. <laughs> and um, uh, Robin's just going to run down and be with with uh, Neb as she yes. wakes up. I see she's just and, and trying to help her to her feet. He's like, come mm-hmm. on, kid. We, we, we got to be, you pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Come on, you can do this. I'm doing my best, really. Ow. None of the adventure stories talked about how much pain this all was. Um, and if it's possible, my action, I'd like to do yeah. a medicine check. Yeah, absolutely. Give me a medicine check. Plus four. Uh, that's a 13. 13. Yeah, with your, your you know, your days of uh, sort of in field medicine <laughs> um <laughs> you just reach in your bag and rip out maybe you know a couple of ace bandages or a little bit of you know cream or anything you just even just cleaning her up a little bit helps sort of you know help her feel a little bit better and uh you get three healing out of that hey. neb three just Oof. good old-fashioned medicine healing i'll take it i'm You'll so be- happy <laughs> <laughs> all right anything else robin that's oh, it. you were also bardically inspired by that. So hold on. If you <gasps> wanted to use your bardic inspiration on it. Yes, yes. Roll, what is that? A D? Roll a D6, right? D6? Yeah. Maybe it'll get you a higher that die. Be, that'll be a two. So 15. Okay, so 15? 15, that'll get you a higher die. Let's see. Five. Oh, Five ooh. healing. Nice. I get, I get two more. Nice. Okay. I get two more nice. out of that. Go for it. Okay. I'm, I'm halfway there. Yay. I've gone from <laughs> dead to almost halfway there. Oh my goodness. No. She's halfway, halfway there. there. I know. Yay. <laughs> Robin, anything else? That's it. That's it. All right. We're back up. This one's gone. There's the one. Oh my gosh. Full, full, you know, sort of health, but it's just looking back and forth between Feruza, who just shot one out of the sky back to the, the fire uh, pit off in the corner uh, where the rest of you are sort of standing and you can see it visibly sort of stalks away from that fire as it goes back towards the entrance of the mine, kind of looking at all of you and then just kind of disappears. Let's see how well he does. Can we take a tax as it's trying to retreat? Um, will you can, yeah, we can give you another, uh, thing here because he doesn't do a very good job of hiding. Um, <laughs> uh, he's, you know, as he goes back towards the, uh, the mouth of the cave, you can see him trying to kind of put himself back together to look like an icicle again, but he's, he's quivering a little bit, uh, and you all can still sort of see him vibrate in that corner. Um, so that's his move, Maeve. Well, it was a good cat. effort, but no. <laughs> <laughs> and the snow, like in a line. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, Do I make a saving throw of some kind? I know, it's an, it's an attack roll. Go for it. 
Um, it's a 21 to hit. Oof, that'll hit. And it yes. is a... Force damage? It is force, and it is nine. Points. Nine! Nice. Um, the force of this thing pummels it. Again, you see it almost break into two. It's still, even both pieces are kind of still moving, as then you see its little hands call, crawl, clawing itself forward into the snow. Um, but that's a solid hit. Anything else, Maeve? Uh, I sort of popped my shoulder back into place. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Ouch. Neb. Oh, jeez. Okay. Um, Neb is going to finish standing up and look over yes. at that Robin and Fruz and say, I really should stop getting hurt. <laughs> this has been bad. This has been bad. Uh, and I'm assuming we're all heading towards the fire at this point. Yeah. Right? Okay, so you get up. As you do, you notice there's a little a little limp in in all of this. You must have twisted your ankle, sprained it, something like that. It's just a little bit of a, a hitch in your giddy up as you start to move towards. Mm -hmm. um, as we are moving, mm -hmm. I don't want to get near this creature, but mm -hmm. do we essentially have to move past where it is? No, this one is off back by the mine in the kind of triangle of space. There's the mine, the campfire, and where you are. So you okay. can follow the opposite side to get to okay. the fire. Um, then I can't do the thing I want to do because I don't want to get closer to this thing. So I'm just going <laughs> to limp my way back okay. to the campfire. <laughs> you limp your way, you know, slowly but surely kind of making your, your way over. You are a little bit slower than you are used to. Uh, Silas at the campfire. Um, Silas is going to uh, continue moving back okay. toward the um, fire, but after he sees that the creature... You're there. You're in, you, oh, you were I'm already there. Fire. You got okay, there excellent. with your previous movement. So then from here, uh, Silas, um, you know, not quite understanding why, like, it, it almost feels like he's tired and mm. um and ma you know like magically fatigued yeah. or something but he's like trying to eat something out and he thinks to himself like maybe i just have to try harder and so then he um kind of like jump steps to the side and he's like all right stop collaborate and listen and then he starts <laughs> looks dancing. really good in your hand. and then and then basically uh he uh and he's like i'm killing your brain like a poisonous mushroom deadly and, and like as he gets to that part um, something finally happens and needs to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, I'm so not wise. That is a three. And it does four points of psychic damage. <laughs> nice. And it has disadvantage <laughs> on its next attack. Disadvantage. Okay. Whew. Um, anything else, uh, Silas? That's it. All right. Feruza. Focus, Deborah. Focus. There we go. Surprisingly, <laughs> Feruza is not going to poke the bear. That was shocking. <laughs> so she's just going to, she's sort of breathing heavy. Mm -hmm. the, the electricity is sort of dissipating from her eyes. She, the axe is just sort of by her side. And um, what she doesn't notice is that the axe is, um, it's grown maybe half an inch in size, but it's not, it's just totally, she doesn't notice it at yeah. all. Like a half an inch. And she sort of puts, yeah, she puts it back in her, her pants uh -huh. and she is just breathing heavy. And like, now she's starting to feel like the, the bludgeoning pain that she right. didn't get from it. And she's sort of walking back. She's w looking at this thing, just this look on her face. And she's just walking back toward the fire as fast as she can get there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, you, you, because your legs are so long, a walk, <laughs> <laughs> it's like five strides and you're yeah. you're back to the campfire mm -hmm. um but yeah you keep your eye on it the whole time as it kind of sputters and <laughs> kind of around in the snow right back in front of that mine robin oh it's my turn again it's oh. your turn. uh i'm heading back towards the fire um can i make it there in this turn you can okay um also, also i still have expeditious retreat yeah. um Sorry, how close are the creatures to the fire? 20 feet. Only the one left. Okay, then um, as soon as she's safe within the fire range of heat, um, how how close does that put the creature? So, so the fire, you're about 20 feet from the opening of the mine, and it's right in front of the opening of the mine. So once you're in the fire, you're 20 feet from it. Okay. In the fire, when you're then... in your camp, yeah. Okay, then um, 
whether I use my expedition to, to get to the yeah. fire so I can have movement, I'll use my movement to step forward just five feet. Gotcha. And once again, just lash out that, that lightning that energy. energy and try to pull All it right. towards me. Yeah. So that is strength, oh. strength 15. Oh, sorry, strength 13. I have a 14. Ah, okay. So you make it and nothing else happens. Nothing else so... happens. Okay. At this oh. point, it recognizes because you, you know, you mm -hmm. use this move before. It recognizes mm -hmm. a little bit. And as it happens, you just sort of see again these shreds. It digs its nails into the ground and just <laughs> looks at you as it sort of holds itself against that uh, that damaging it brings. Isn't it like else? in two pieces now, right? It is in like two pieces, so yes. It's like the other one's just two. quivering, but this one is, you know, the main one is still holding on. Uh, is that it for you, Robin? Yeah. Okay. Um, with that, it leaps into the air. It's got like one and a half wings left as it sort of flies lopsided, carrying itself up 30 feet, hovering up there like a helicopter uh, in the air. You can see it turn, attempting to make an escape. Maeve. Oh, you're, I think you're muted. Muted. I am. I don't think so. <laughs> no. <laughs> Go ahead, make your attack. Uh, 19. 19. 19 one. <laughs> yes. And that's six points of damage. Six points of damage. <gasps> it's hanging on by a thread. Uh, <laughs> Jeez. Anything so else, Maeve? I, I got nothing. That's it. All right. Just standing standing close there. to the fire, hoping yeah, that it tries to come after me and has to come through the fire. Cool. Mm -hmm. All, I mean, all five of you now, have, you know, made your way back to the campfire, and you're you're sort of huddled around it as you're spotting this thing in the air against the the dark sky. As Maeve lashes, you see another piece of its wing. The other one sort of fall off down to the ground as it squawks, trying to fly away into the air. Neb. I'm by the fire, and this thing is you 30 are. feet up. It is. Okay. Is it? Is it like next to a tree branch or no, like on top this of trees? Is, this is like the the clearing in front of the uh, mine entrance. So there's no trees right here. Um, I might offer. No, it's pretty much rocky, kind of going up above the the mine and that you know up up the mountain. Okay. This is a clearing. Okay. I think that's gonna work then. Mm -hmm. Neb is at this point. She is thinking about how um, if if I'm gonna continue to go on adventures and be magical, I need to figure out how I can help <laughs> fight stuff more because <laughs> they're doing dark. all the work and I'm just getting I'm just getting uh, hit. Um, and no, I have to be within ten feet. Shoot. Uh, um, the only thing I'm gonna try I'm to on do. a shot putter. <laughs> Uh, no, no, I've got That's a ball special. I can, I can uh, do something if it's within ten feet of me to okay. inspire my allies, but it has Ooh. to be within ten feet of me. I so. mean, I would offer if you wanted to climb the side of the mountain. Oh no, oh, you could no. get within ten feet of it. No, no, I don't think this is worth that okay. much. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> Here's, here's what I'm going to do just for flavor and just for fun. Just for flavor and fun. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, all we're doing because, here. Flavor and fun. Yeah. So Neb is looking up at this horrible creature and is thinking about, I, I need to do more damage. I kind of wish I could just do, make fire happen. Now, the only time that she's ever done this has been uh, she's felt what the weather is going to be like. Yeah. And mm -hmm. she hasn't done anything else. But at the moment, she's pretty sure that she could, you know, a lighter snuff out a candle, a torch, or a small campfire. Do you think, th and that's why I was asking if there's like a yes. tree nearby or something. I see. <laughs> uh, is there like a, a piece of a, a leaf that's like stuck in it or something that I could just glare at? Okay. <laughs> let's, let's, yes. Okay, let's say, let's say this. Um, If not, I'm okay with it. I just, I just figured I'd try. <laughs> yeah, no, I want, I want to give you something because I think it is cool. Um, we're gonna say if you'd like, you can pick up, you know, like something off the ground here and chuck it towards it. Something flammable mm. here, if you would like to attempt that with your turn, okay. like throw something at it. 
we'll see if it hits or if it goes close or what it is, but, um, okay. Um, I would want to pick up a, uh, something that is not currently on fire. I'm not gotcha. going to grab yes. something yes. out of the fire. Out of the fire. All... Cause that's hot. Um, yeah. Yeah. It'd be hard to do that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you've got, you yeah, know, who would do that? <laughs> You've got wrappers from the things you've been eating. You've got pages out of your book. You know, you, you crumpled up. There might still be a crumpled ball of paper that's not lit. Yeah, I love that. Oh, okay. she's just going to grab a piece of paper <laughs> and crumple it up and be like, this paper airplane. Why would I just <laughs> throw fireballs or something and throw the fire at, or the, the ball of yes. uh, paper at it. Okay, give so me, what would... Give me a ranged attack. Oh, so dear. d20 plus your dexterity bonus which is a minus one so here Great. we go here we go Shoot. uh that, that's that's a six, <laughs> that's a no. six. Uh -oh. okay. no big deal you throw it it goes you know it goes too short but for a little while you can see it it looks like it's gonna go and then it just kind of curves there but as it's flying i will still do the thing and <laughs> And I'm like, a fireball! And it, it just kind of sets on fire. It's like someone came up with a, yeah. with a match and it suddenly just lights up and then poof, shooting star. And then it, but you know, it kind of heads in the trajectory of it, but it just falls about 15 feet short and okay, falls need... fluttering down the ground. Okay, better aim. Crisply. I need better aim. Okay. It just threw right. a fireball. It's but it's like amazing. It's a man. It no, I, I'm pretty sure I, I threw a piece of paper and set it on fire. I don't think that's the same thing, but I appreciate those. But you, okay. you did it remotely. Silas, <laughs> it is your turn in the awe of having seen this. We can't, we can't let it get away. And um, Silas uh, resumes after that moment of yes. awe. He resumes his dance. And then, you know, he, he's basically like, if there was a problem, yo, I'll solve it. Check out my TV. My, my <laughs> and and he, like, he, he starts doing it. And a wisdom save of 14. Of 14. That's an eight. Oh, nice. Yeah. So that is going to take another four points of psychic damage as it flies in the air and you're you know the the little the little sort of light you know ball of fire sort of just wafts down to the ground gently you're dancing over by the fire you say your your uh your rap <laughs> vanilla ice <laughs> yes your vanilla ice, ice, ice baby. rap ice. moment ice ice baby you just see it go oh <laughs> it's just really disappointed in it. Song. Yeah, disappointed in itself and you and the world. And yeah. as it does, it just starts to fall down to the ground as it smashes into the earth below, taking the damage not only from its disappointment but of the fall as well. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> disappointment damage. Disappointment damage. <laughs> and you see shatters of ice <laughs> spill in a little fountain from where it landed in the snow. Did you see that? I disappointed it to death. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Me too. That is a uh, that is certainly a power to have. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Annoyed it to death. Annoyed Silas is not death. getting the shade at all. He is right from the sunshine. You know what? It 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 did what it needed to do. So, exactly. so with the five of you warm around the fire, looking at each other's horrible wounds, with that we will conclude this chapter of Children of Erte. Uh, Thank you for playing. Please remember that life itself is the most wonderful fairy tale. Good night. Good night.